as much as I have loved decorating my new house and getting settled in here, I'm really getting itchy feet. I've not really been outdoors for about a week and a half now and I cannot stand it any longer. So we're going to spend this Sunday afternoon heading off to a location that I've never been to before. It's called Abadour Beach but the reason we're going there is because there's an ancient well there that was used hundreds of years ago by a saint which is believed to have healing powers. And I only discovered this place online a few, about a month ago now, and it sounds very, very intriguing. So we're going to go and discover that just now, and of course, we're going to take all of you guys with us. So here we are at St Drosten's Well, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's on the Aberdeenshire coast. A lot of you ask me how, where these places are. So looking on Google Maps, it's near the village of New Aberdour and Rose Hearty, not far from Fraserburgh. And as I said on, before we came here, this well is believed to have healing powers and it was used by St Drosten to help heal people hundreds of years ago. And there's a lot of wells like this around Scotland and I think they're fascinating in many ways. And beside me, where the well remains, there is a clam shape that holds the well together. And it's this clam shape dates back to the Victorian days, which I think is pretty special. amazing that this has been preserved for so long and what is so amazing is that so many people come here and don't realize that this small bit of history is hidden within here they just come to the beach and completely miss it it just shows that you should really do your research before you go to a location and learn the history behind where you go and it makes that location so much more interesting <laughs> for the wow but it only takes a few seconds to look at it and enjoy it but there is some caves down here which I never knew were going to be here so we're going to go and explore them I love a cave adventure it almost takes you back to your childhood takes you to another world and I love just to see what's actually in the caves and how big and diverse they can be we're reaching the first one now let's see what's inside It's so warm and sheltered in here. You could just set up camp for the night and sleep. And it's amazing how much the caves can block out the sound of the sea as well. cave has a lot of potential for photos, to get some interesting photos showing the scale of the cave, showing exploration of the cave and the light that's going to come into it. I think this would be a great place to come on a really early morning in the summer when the sun is rising in that direction or setting in that direction and you're getting the, the nice golden light coming into the cave. I definitely want to come back here in the summer months to do something like that because 
I think you can tell so many stories and fantasy stories in this cave system but I'd never been here before so I never knew what opportunities would present themselves here but this is a magical place, sort of hidden out of the way. With it being a Sunday, it's a lot busier today than I would have liked it to have been. So getting images today, I'm, I'm not probably gonna, I'm probably not going to do it. But I know this is now a really good place to come back in the future, and I know exactly when I want to come back and hopefully make the most of the light that can present itself in here. I mean, even in this vlog right now, looking at me, I love how I'm being lit with the light coming in from the cave door. We've got really nice red stone above me and it's just beautiful. <laughs> Now this is pretty incredible, just discovered this, I thought this was a big cave but it's actually a big sea arch which is normally cut off by high tide. But just as I'm saying this, we're starting to get some drizzle coming down and with the, the late afternoon light it's looking really, really cool. I've always found cave systems fascinating but incredibly difficult to get images when in terms of photography and I did film a video last year at some of the cave systems in Murray which if you never saw it please feel free to check it out where one of my friends stood under these massive archways in a pink jacket and I got some interesting images that I was reasonably happy with but coming here today is spurring me on and giving me so so much encouragement and so much inspiration to come back and photograph these caves in a similar light and in similar conditions but this time hopefully learning from that shoot and creating something even more special. I love how in cave systems as well that the, the sound just echoes and this big archway that we're in just now it's just so beautiful I don't think it can capture the beauty of it in this camera but I'm loving just like I said in the other cave the light that's casting on me and it's given me so much inspiration and so much motivation to come back here with my camera which by the way my camera is with me it's in the car but there's just so many people here today enjoying this and the lights not quite right and I just wanted to use this as a scouting opportunity but what a location I'm so glad I came here I think today's proving to me that you know when you've been stuck indoors all week doing stuff no matter how enjoyable it's been you have to try and find that hour or two in your week to come out and just enjoy nature to enjoy the outdoors get some fresh air and come to places like this which you've maybe never been to before or places that you've not been to for a long time and allow your creative mind and your imagination to run wild and just enjoy the beauty of the natural arches and the natural caveways that present themselves right in front of your eyes. this true connection with the coastline it's probably because I was brought up beside the sea but every time I come to somewhere new like this which opens new opportunities and new beauty I'm just always in awe by it and when you come into big sea arches and caves like this you really appreciate that sheer force and the how strong the ocean is and how they can carve this out of rock and everything that surrounds our coastlines and how nature and the sea can produce beautiful places like this which allows our imaginations to run wild both from a kind of story fictional point of view as well as an exploration point of view and a creative point of view. I love being in places where you can feel that power of nature and that force of nature and where you can sit in these beautiful caverns and caves that have been created by nature and not humans. I just I almost think that things like this are so much more beautiful than anything that we could do because nature has done this 
just naturally, obviously it's nature, but I just find it fascinating. And it's so beautiful. And it almost makes you feel more connected with nature in the natural world and makes you appreciate it more and respect it more, I guess. I think the more you're outdoors and the more you're interacting with environments like this, the more you're gonna respect nature, the more you're gonna respect everything that comes with it, the weather, the conditions you find yourself in, and the more I think you're gonna feel content with your life because you kind of realize through doing things like this and spending time in these sort of places that you are just one small person in a massive world. And whatever's going on in your life, when you're out in nature, you can almost detach yourself from all the stresses and the strains because, you know, although nature can be very dangerous, nature's not gonna put you down. Nature's not gonna say harsh things to you. So getting out into nature and just embracing it, it makes you feel at one again. It's almost like practicing mindfulness. And today's made me realize that just getting out the house for a few hours, getting away from decorating and painting, and just enjoying some time outdoors in the fresh air and embracing this beautiful country and this beautiful coastline that I just love so much. So there's another cave beside the sea arch, which I've not yet discovered, but Ed has just been in it and tells me it is well worth exploring. So let's go inside it and see exactly what it's got in store for us. I love adventures like this. I love going into places and not knowing what you're gonna find and what you're gonna see. It's a great way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Yes, my mind is made up. I am definitely coming back here with my camera when it is quieter. What a great backdrop. What a beautiful place. It's almost never ending. And I didn't think this cave was gonna be as good as the first cave we went into for photography, but this is like the first cave on a much grander and bigger scale. And just this archway behind me with the light pouring in and all the light reflecting off the rocks, it's a very challenging place for photography because you've got very dark areas, very light areas. But something I've never tried yet is photo stacking and it's been something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. So when I come back here eventually, hopefully in a few months time, if not definitely in the summer, I'm gonna try photo stacking for the first time and make the most of this beautiful cave and the changes in light, the subtle differences, as well as the dark shades and the harsh highlights. I'm gonna try and create some beautiful images showing the scale of the cave, as well as allowing us to be transported into a fantasy world and to embrace this beautiful coastline and what nature has created. It's insane. Insane. I think in some countries you would pay quite a lot of money to come into cave systems like this just to view them. And the fact that we have things like this all over Scotland that you can get into and explore for free whenever you want is magnificent. And we should definitely get out and embrace them. Obviously be careful, they are not the safest of places, but they are well worth getting out and enjoying and well worth exploring. that we've just been in and I come out the other end just expecting to see the sea and I'm completely blown away look at this we've got beautiful rugged cliffs there's another archway there wow this place just keeps giving and giving this is incredible like, unbelievable you could spend a whole day a whole day exploring this wow just look at this
like I'm finding inspiration left, right and centre today. We've got this makeshift path that goes down to the beach leading into this archway in the rock face and I think it would make quite an interesting image one day when I come back if the light is right. Most probably at sunrise because the sun rises over there somewhere but I just like this idea of this path leading to this magical cliff face and this magical rocks and taking you away from it all and into some nice, nice place to relax and reminisce. I've got to come back here. I've said that so many times in this video but I think it's so great when you come somewhere new that you've never been before you know and you find so much inspiration and you want to come back to it. I think it's the most exciting thing about landscape photography is that idea of finding these places and then planning in your head when you'd like to come back and enjoy them and embrace them and photograph them and just hoping and praying that the images that you visualise in your head when you're scouting them out and exploring them you can make into a reality when you do come back. And I guess the message that I want you all to take from this video today is this idea that it's so important to find that time every week if you can to get out of the house for an hour or two and just enjoy nature but most importantly I think every now and again you've got to get out and go to places you've never been to before and it really really allows you to, to feel so much happier and it allows you to just get away from everything and enjoy it and I think especially here in Scotland everywhere I go there's hidden gems everywhere and I can't honestly like I've been doing YouTube for a year and a half now. There's so many places I've been to before YouTube that I've still not filmed at. And there is just as many places in Scotland that I've never been to and never filmed at that I would still love to go to. And even in this local area near where I stay, there are still so many places I've not been to. And it's not even that big an area. And you know, people say that Scotland is quite a small country, but my goodness, it's got so much to offer. So if you live here, get out and explore it and enjoy it. And if you don't and you ever want to come on holiday here, you'll be spoiled for choice. You don't even have to ask where people would recommend going because literally everywhere in Scotland has so much to offer. It's just about finding what's right for you, whether it's beautiful dramatic coastline like I've got here today, whether it's the rugged highlands or whether it's, it's peatland or I, you know, just whatever, whatever. There's so much here to discover in Scotland. And I'm not going to stop saying that because I love this country so much. No way! So we're just about to leave this cave adventure behind and we come across this memorial statue to a lady called Jane White who was on board this ship and she ended up saving the whole crew, a whole 15 people were on this ship, on this boat should I say, and what is amazing about it is, read this. The steamer William Hope of Dundee left Fraserburgh at 6am on the morning of Tuesday the 28th of October 1884 to head to Berghead. That's where I'm from! That's amazing! The village that I was grew up in has got connections to this place that we're at today. To be fair, it's not that far away, but an hour and a half drive. But I didn't know that this story was going to relate to the village that I grew up in. I think that's amazing. So the story goes that there was this big storm and it caused the ship on its way back to, to Fraserburgh to get grounded on some rocks near New Abadour where we are just now. And this lady called Jane White, what she did was she waded out into the sea, grabbed this rope that was thrown to her by the men, wrapped it round her waist, dug her feet into the sand and basically held the boat in place while these men got off. That is incredible for one woman to have saved 15 men's lives by holding onto a boat which must have been goodness knows how many times her body weight. What a heroine and what a great story. What a great way to end this afternoon adventure. As always I want to say a huge thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you all again next time. Mm -hmm.